So right now I have a little bit of a problem and that is the uh, battery cable keeps falling down and uh, drags against the asphalt. Uh, one of the problems I believe is because that speedometer cable has been removed from the motor. Uh, I'm now using a GPS speedometer and the motor that I'm gonna replace this with does not support a um, the old style speedometer cables. I think I'm gonna go ahead, take the plunge and actually do the whole, uh, what do you call it? The, the powertrain upgrade slash replacement. I've been waiting months to get all the parts in. I think I've got everything and uh, a few more things came in last week. the ramps on the front wheels uh, mainly because it's harder to get the front wheels raised up. The uh, differential is low enough I'm able to lift the car up higher and get my jack stands under there compared to the front. The jack is already at the maximum height. I've been throwing on a jack stand back here as it goes up. My fear is like when I'm under this car, if this comes down and the license plate is over my neck, not a good position to be in. All right, so this is the part I was talking about where the differential helps me jack up the back end a little bit higher. All right, so if you want any indications of how much I trust your jack stands, I've got some backup safety measures here. The front wheels might have gone back a little bit when I jacked up the back of the car. Looks like we're actually pretty level. Look at that. I'm gonna take off the battery terminals and starting with the main negative first. The battery runs Bluetooth and all that. Shouldn't be bad, so let's see what's going on. Oh, no arcing at all. Sweet. Hey, every time I take off a terminal, screw the nuts back on or I'll lose these. Most of the cables I just sat laying on the batteries while I disconnect everything else because um, I have a feeling like something's grounded with the frame. So until every terminal was disconnected, I figured I'd play it safe. And uh, now I'm thinking about, I'm just gonna pull the batteries out. Uh, batteries are out, so it's all empty now. I'm gonna start removing everything off of the motor itself. So I'm taking the cables back off the motor. I'm noticing this is starting to rub. Here's a lot of the differential fluid coming off and apparently it doesn't have that great of a seal. But yeah, because there's a thick gap all the way up here. I'm pretty much right there. I'm just unscrewing the four screws on the end. I've got the jack stand in a vertical position this time because I know it's gonna be um, difficult to pull this straight out just because I think there's some kind of suction going on. I got this out because I, th I thought I could catch the oil. It's just not uh, optimal. It's too large for the area. So I'm gonna go get my small cup. Okay, so it looks like the cup fits perfectly in that one spot. It's just not going to catch the oil um, just because it's too far over to the right when you look at this. All right, so here we go. I, I got a little help from the kernel to go directly under the motor and then I can swap out with the larger bucket as I pull away. See this is the part that was one of the hardest steps before because I had to break a seal. So I'm gonna have to get in there. It's coming. So you gotta think that that um, shaft, this has to be as long as that shaft that get, get there. And there we go. We're starting to break that seal. So I'm just gonna let this drain for a bit. This actually doesn't take a while. Look at how clear that fluid is. I had just uh, replaced all the fluid when I had the motor off the last time. So there's definitely an improvement. Okay, so 
and took the jack away. Right now, this motor is hanging on just by its shaft. Okay, here I am with this weird jack set up again. I just had all that weight come down on my uh, my hand or my finger, so it's it's not too bad. I can bend it. It's just at first, it's like just absorbing the pain. Go 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 go! <laughs> okay, so here's our motor. One of the things I missed before up what I saw is uh, all these holes in the edge here. And I'm pretty sure that's just to counterbalance the um, the spinning so it's even on all sides. The other thing is I noticed that there is just a solid metal in the back. I was saying don't forget to take a rubber grommet out of these and put them in the next motor. And there's no rubber grommet in there. All right, here's the two motors side by side. At this point, I'm about to take off the uh, the motor's plate. So I've got my uh, oil pan ready to catch it all. So we'll see. So that's where it was connected. The more I keep looking into this, the more I'm just a little bit confused because um, we have a lot of holes here. <laughs> um, I can put the air intake, I was able to unscrew it and put it here for all the air to come in. I'm concerned about having to cut through both of these areas, but um, I can't get any heat to come into the cabin because you look all around, the air comes out. Uh, all around the sides whereas this is uh, limited to only coming out through this one area I'm gonna be pulling off all these wires yeah, half me is wondering if I should keep the resistor on it's just not used Somebody else could use it more than I could. They don't, there's not many left. All right, so here we go. We're in the controller area. Let me just put this seat down. Get that out of the way. The cover. Now we're gonna leave the controller. I'm gonna let it actually uh, still make sounds and, and react to the pedal. It's just that I don't want it to actually um, send voltage to the motor. So I'm just gonna take off all the large cables here. Um, fuse that goes between here and here. Apparently one of the fuses was already broken and the other one was in the process of breaking apparently. Looks like it did have some issue that was starting to uh, get a little hot. And these were over top of each other, so I guess uh, somebody couldn't find the proper fuse. So they went ahead and uh, got one that could, uh, is doubled up to handle double the amps. 
quite an interesting uh, solution there. So I'm just pushing all these down through this hole now. Those are through. Can we just push that down through it? So let's just pull everything out that we can. So these are the main battery wires and this is that big giant thing we just pushed. It's beautiful. Ew. Ew. Okay, so here's all the battery cables that were in the city car. You can see right here is the main one that was dragging against the asphalt. Okay, what I want to see is if the contactors are still set up, they're still wired to the 12 volt system. So I want to see if I can uh, turn, turn the keys, listen to see if the contactors switch on and um, try and activate them with the accelerator pedal, even though I don't have the main batteries in the car. Awesome, awesome. Uh, basically, the consensus is do not cut. It's a bad idea. Um, we'll weaken the case. So I'm going to leave it as is. Um, I mean, people in D&D Motors said, you know, it would be fine unless you run up to 72 volts, then you'd need force cooling. So actually, it seems like the motor plate itself is fine. Uh, it's just that the casing itself should not be cut into or else you'll weaken the structure of the motor and whatnot. So I decided just to cut this one area, and at first I tried to take a Dremel and cut down, and it was just uh, it was just very difficult, and I didn't want to be laboring over this all day. And I figured, okay, well, why not just uh, drill a few holes in it? It'll let air flow through it. Spread these holes is one of the things I needed to do, but uh, I found some bolts that will probably uh, fit into there once I thread them. All right, I just took my M8 tap and uh, was able to thread this hole. I set my screw where my bolt fits in there just fine. It's perfect. Apparently, these holes are too small for these bolts. All right, well, I was trying to drill, drill these holes a little bit bigger. This thing, this liner gasket on the inside came out. And now I can't get this to actually line up with the hole. It's like there's too much space. Ow, oh, man, it's still hot. I was starting to mark the, the bolt up on the edge. I think I actually just burnt myself. Um, and I realized I wasn't going to be able to pull out the bolt and see the uh, actual markings. And it was going to be difficult to cut it once I did pull it out. So I just took the Dremel tool and uh, just cut down while it was actually in there. All right, so that's the finished piece. The, uh, the bolts are at the proper length. They're threaded. They're of the right size now. That's pretty much on there. I still don't have that on there though. Let's see. And it's not gonna go in there either. There's this uh, red stuff and then there's this black stuff. And it's actually like a thin layer of something. Not sure what the red stuff is. I'm wondering if I could use the gasket maker. Just, just clean up the red stuff and anything I feel on, on top of the surface of this black thing and then put the gasket maker on top and then put that motor plate over top of that just to make sure nothing uh, can leak out here. So I'm just taking some brake cleaner and I'm not sure if this is the right thing to do. Get this gasket kind of kind of cleaned off. So basically I've got all that goop on there all right so i'll just let that sit for an hour so open up the gasket 
and it's a small thing. It's got a little inlet on that side. Um, it's like cranberry sauce. But I'm just gonna put it on here, slosh it around, and uh, just make sure it's just greased up enough that it can move around if it needs to and things can bump against it. So there we go. And then I'll just stick it right in there and it fits perfectly. Just lines up with those keys. And let me see, can I push it all the way in? There we go. All right, it's too close to being raining out here. So I went ahead and uh, tighten things up, put on the motor. The main goal is to get that motor in there and it's done. We've got, we've got forced air coming through the vent, through the drilled holes, uh, but that's just gonna come out all around. I might need to look at a different solution for heating the car instead of using the motor. Um, yeah, but yeah, let's, let's finish up, clean up and we'll be done.